welcome. Thanks for joining us. A great night for baseball ahead on the show. It's the Miami Marlins and the Chicago Cubs. John Shelby and Chris Singleton with you. And Chris, a guy that's been having a huge impact for this team all year. Michael Bush leads the team at OPS. So he's the guy that looks to slug and basically make things happen for them offensively. Just a machine in terms of production at the plate. He'll take his walks. He'll barrel up the baseball. He'll hit the ball in the gaps. He'll hit the ball over the fence. So talk about a guy going good. That's him right now. And he's a bat that you want to stay away from if you're the pitcher. Coming up on the first pitch, today's starting pitcher, Javier Assad. What's the word on him? It's always interesting to see how he utilizes all of his pitches and how many of those he has a good feel for on that given day. When he's right, he's really able to keep hitters guessing, and all of his stuff seems to be coming out of the same arm slot, the same tunnel, and that can make life very difficult on his opponents. Here's the second baseman, Luis Arias. The pitch. Not wow. even close there. And we're underway from Wrigley Field. Riding to the plate. And that one fouled off. And the righty deals. Comes up empty. That's strike two. This guy's got such a good sinker. As a hitter, you've got to look up in the zone. If you look down, you're going to be chasing stuff in the dirt. The wind of the pitch. Not close with that one. And it's two and two. And that's outside. And that's ball four. Now, this was a story we were paying attention to before the game. We've seen him give up walks in the past, and it's an issue once again early on. And now the switch hitting first baseman, Josh Bell. Fast ball for a strike. Going one. Good eye on that spot. One ball, one strike. And another ball. Three balls, one strike. The two on. And that one fouled off. That's outside. Three and two now. Jake Berger waits on deck for Miami. Three, two. And ball four to a board. Two walks in the first has to be some cause for concern. I mean, you're talking about a guy you want to pitch deep into the ball game. It's not going to help with the pitch count right there. They can't afford to hand out three bases at this rate. And up next for Miami, Jake Berger. Swing and a tapper that rolls foul. On the ground a second, might be two. There's one. Relay to first, double play. Sometimes double plays get turned so quickly that you don't really get to appreciate all of the finer details and how these guys execute them. Right there, really nice footwork, and a good feed to second was the key to pulling it off. On the north side of Chicago, John Chambi and Chris Singleton. Jazz Chisholm Jr. now. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Two outs with a runner at third. Oh. 
There's a strike. Definitely not a pitch location you're expecting up there as a hitter when you know the guy's got a good sinker ball. If he can get in that location, boy, you've got to look top to bottom, and that's going to make it very difficult to hit. In the dirt. Wow, that's a great job behind the dish there. Down the line, and it's foul. Runner at third, two away. That one not close. Two and two. Just misses there. Definitely got the hitter conscious of the pitch inside. Really think the outer half is open. Brian De La Cruz to bat next. And the pitch. Battling here as he fouls it away. Grinding A-B right here. About to see pitch number 10. Two outs. Swing and a miss. And that is that. He's in a tough spot. Had to make a great pitch. Did it. Got the strikeout. Gets out of the jam. Clearly, he's happy with those results. here at the friendly confines and on the hill here today Jesus Lazardo try to stay back for that power changeup. speed differential between the fastball and the changeup is huge hitters they have a hard time staying back so up now for Chicago in half as the lefty gets to work half a switch hitter it can be challenging for guys at the big league level to maintain a good swing from both sides of the plate Clearly, he's got more pop from the left side, but in 2022, the right side was respectable as well. And a pitch. That one finds the zone, and the count is one and one. One way to make a guy real uncomfortable to play is pound him inside with good velocity. They're doing that right here. Kicks and deals. Wouldn't chase that time. Swing and a ball hit out towards left center field. Gordon sizing this one up. And there's one down. Here's a look at the Cubs lineup. And no doubt a big factor in this series so far, Michael Bush. And he's about as hot as they come right now, Boog. Three home runs already in this series. He looks awfully comfortable at the plate right now. Swing is just flat out locked in. It's in the zone for a long time, so he's getting a lot of barrel. He'll be looking to do more damage in this one. And now, Seiya oh, Suzuki hi. just missed. One out, base is empty. and he can't hang on. He doesn't have a throw, and they can't get the out. And up to the plate comes Cody Bellinger. Fought off foul.
Ryan Hoeing will take over here. This is his fifth appearance of the year. Left hand hitter waits. Runner takes off and fouled off. Got him looking as the fastball runs back over the inside corner. Oh, just a beautiful fastball on the inside corner for that backwards K right there. I think the hitter saw it all the way coming from that opposite arm angle so I got to think he was looking away and just got locked up by the hard stuff boring in on his hands. So two down now and here is run around the move pitch in for a strike throw to second great jump and that is a stolen base it wasn't even close. I think that still kind of sets the tone not just for this game but for the entire series first inning game one so that kind of tells me they're going to be aggressive on offense and try to force the issue whenever they can. And it's second. That Five misses hits. the zone. One and two to count. Miami's bullpen with some action. A.J. Puck getting ready to go. Man on second, two down. That one way outside. Ball two. As a pitcher, you know the runner on second is ready to push things with his speed. A base hit is probably going to be a big run, so you really have to execute on the mound. Ground ball, oh. left side, and foul ball. This to third, Berger. Fires across the diamond, inning over. Cubs leave one scoreless after one. Back here at Wrigley Field, of top of the second. Now here's the Marlins DH, Brian De La Cruz. The right hander back to work. A little bit high, maybe. And that is ball one. There's a strike. Well, as a hitter, you're hoping that the command on that sinker doesn't come until later in the ball game. But if that's how it's going to be all day, it's going to be a tough one for the offense. Way out front for strike two. He has a tendency to chase out of the zone, and that slider that's down, that's one of his money pitches to get that swing and miss. And another ball. Now all leave it up. Swings and lines a base hit into left field. So a man on base to start the inning. That is it. The right field is the now it's the right fielder, Jesus Sanchez. Fouled off. He was late. With the go-ahead run at first, here at the top of the second. Now one and one. One and one. Slice the other way and foul. With two strikes, may see some movement over there at first base, trying to stay out of the double play right here. Left-hand batter waits. He swings and hits a fly ball, center field. Puts it away for the out. And now for the Marlins, Nick Gordon. Good power, not great in the OBP department. Definitely wants to stay out of the double play here. Ball on the ground in the infield. 
should be an inning ending double play that's in there strike one De La Cruz leads off first with one away a little bit high and it's one and one That's always the key to effective pitching is getting ahead in the count. And as a pitcher, it really allows you to start expanding the zone. Hitters become defensive, and all of a sudden that plate starts to get really wide. And what happens is because of the pressure, you end up committing to a pitch as a batter before you recognize what it is, and that's what leads to the strikeout. And now it's Vidal Bruhan. Gets the outside corner with that one. Bruhan measures five feet ten inches. 26 years old and he was born in the Dominican Republic. Next offering is in for a strike. Two outs. Stays alive. The pitch. That one misses, and it's one and two. No score here in the second. That one in the dirt. Two and two. Well, with the amount of pitches that can end up in the dirt, a good secondary lead doesn't have to get away from the catcher, but if you're anticipating based off the trajectory, get yourself in the scoring position. That ball right there landed in what they call a no man's land, meaning it's not really a spot on the field where you can expect anyone to get to it easily. I mean, it's a tough play going back for the shortstop, but also for the outfielders trying to come in. they got to go a long way as well. A chance now to take the lead, and at this point in the game, that could be a deciding run. On the ground, they take the force out, and that is the inning. Marlon strand a pair. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Here at Wrigley Field, we head to the bottom of the second. Dansby Swanson stands in. Now the right-hander ready to go. Still no score. The shortstop takes the ball. And that's outside. Now 2-0. There's the strike. 95 of that one. Offering misses down and away. And that's too high, ball four. Maybe a little loss of focus on the mound right there. Pretty much gifted in first base with a quick free pass. And up next for Chicago, Michael Bush. He's been showing off some pop lately. Three homers already in this series. Right through there for a strike. Nobody out. Runner at first. That one misses. One and one. Good to lay off that pitch down. Throw over to first. Swanson back in on a dive. And a count one and two. Go ahead, run it first. Nobody out. Bottom half of inning number two. Ground ball left side could be two. 
Goes to second for one. How about that double play? As a former player, watching 5-4-3 double plays brings back some adrenaline. It's such an exciting play, and it's always a great reminder of baseball being such a team sport. Here's Nico Horner. Swings and misses. That's strike no one. One strike. And here it comes. Ball that one. misses the zone. One Ball one. one. That one fouled off. Two out spaces empty. One, two. And that's in the dirt. Well, this is a guy that can be frustrating for pitchers because he fouls off so many pitches and grinds out the at bat. I'm sure there's some times where a pitcher would rather just give up a first pitch single than have to waste six or seven pitches on one hitter. And he deals. That to right. Nice grab on the run. And that is that. We'll move to the third with no score. And we're back. Now it's the second baseman, Luis Arias. Luis Arias. Assad back to work. He was late there, strike one. Oh. Next one in the dirt. Just ripped a page out of a Greg Maddox playbook. Throw that pitch at the hip and just watch it jump back over the inside part of the plate. Tell you what, you are baffled expecting that to almost hit you and then end up as a called strike. Here's Josh Bell. Fastball for a strike. And it's all in one. One strike. And the pitch. Foul ball there. The 0 2. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. Ball tied up. We're here in the top half of inning number three. Wouldn't chase that time. Well, he's so great about hitting the ball the other way. He gets those arms extended. So right there, just trying to straighten him up a little bit so he doesn't have as much outside plate coverage. Tuckman snags it for the second out. Now the third baseman, Jake Berger. He hit into a double play his first time up. He doesn't get the call. One and oh. And a foul ball. The one one. And a foul ball. Just misses. It's a good take. 
Top of the third, no score. That's hard hit in the line. Brings it in for the third out. And the Marlins down quietly. And we are still scoreless. Pitching change here. A.J. Puck. Bringing in the lefty with a left-handed hitter coming up to hit. Classic bullpen move right here, so we'll see how it works out. Here's Mike Tockman. Leading off for the Cubs. The right fielder, Mike Tuckman. And a pitch. Oh, he doesn't get the call. And that's ball one. And that drops in for a strike. One ball, one strike. Right through there for a strike. Cold night like tonight, last thing you want to do as a hitter is get jammed or even off the end. Trying to find that sweet spot on the bat. Tell you what, you're going to be trying to catch things out front. So off-speed pitches may be a good complement to that fastball. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And that's the first out. Here's Jan Gomes. That one's in there. 0 and 1. Base is empty one away here in the last half of the third. Right field down the line, and that one slices down. Fastball, and he gets out of the way. I don't think he was trying to miss by that much in an 0-2 count. Just tried to overthrow that pitch. One down, base is empty. Nope. And now it's even up. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Here comes a pitch. In the air, out towards right center. Chisholm on the move to the gap. He's got it. Two down. Everyday during batting practice, these outfielders get about 10 minutes of balls in the gaps. They practice this, and when the game comes, they make the play perfectly. In half up to hit. The half daddy. And that one pulled foul. Two down, nobody on. One and ten. Goes down looking. Three up, three down for the Cubs. Still no score. the friendly confines John Chomby with Chris Singleton and set to lead off the fourth Jazz Chisholm Jr. Jazz Chisholm Jr. The pitch ground ball right side tosses the first yep. lead off hitter retired in the fourth well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Let's the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. And now here's the Marlins DH, Brian De La Cruz. And he's already singled in this game. 
That one finds the zone. It's 0-1. The Cubs bullpen with some action. Drew Smiley up and throwing for manager Craig Council. Thompson, the right-hander, also getting loose. The pitch. And that one fouled off. Next pitch is downstairs. All tied up. Top half of inning number four. Foul ball still a one and two count. The wind of the pitch. Swings through it and that's a strikeout. Well, that slider was way out of the zone, and for me, it just comes down to not seeing the pitch out of the hand, not tracking it into the zone, and then also being a little bit anxious, not confident in your two-strike approach. And so when a guy's in that position, you get him to come in early, and a lot of times you get the swing and miss, as you did right there. Fought off foul. Fourth inning underway, no score. That one missed. To the right side, and it goes just foul. The why to kick the pitch. And down on strikes. And it's a three up, three down inning. So they go quietly there to the bottom of inning number four now. We're tied, nothing, nothing. Welcome back. And they turn to a new arm as we kick off the bottom of the fourth. Number 20. And here's the DH for the Cubs, Seiya Suzuki. The designated hit. The wind of the pitch. Breaking ball in there for a strike. Slapped hard the other way, but foul. The wind of the pitch. And that skips in the dirt. That ball is foul, and the pressure is building. Right hander kicks deals. Got him. Now one away. Oh, it's a pretty nasty curveball right there, and the hitter didn't look comfortable at all. Clearly fooled. Tried to check his swing and went around, but it would have been called a third strike anyhow. That's how dirty it was. Nice pitch for the punch out. Bellinger in the box now. Takes strike one. Not sure if he was expecting for the pitcher to come right at him, but he got a nice cookie there and just watched it the entire way. Base is empty one away. We're here at the bottom of the fourth. And ball one. Swung on, popped up on the infield. Berger gets there. He's under it. He's got it. And there's two away. Number five, so now it's the four hole hitter, Christopher Morell. 
It's interesting he plays kind of a, a power spot defensively, but runs pretty well. So when you're looking at that position, you're not expecting someone that has maybe above average speed, but he does. That one ripped. Hauls it in to end the inning. Cubs are down quietly, and we're still knotted at zero. And welcome back to the ballpark. Ready now for the fifth inning at the play. Nick Gordon. Nick Gordon. The pitch. On the ground to third. In time to Bush. One away here in the fifth. That play won't be trending on social media later on, but it's still important now to execute it to perfection. This game is a lot harder than it looks, partner. And at the play for Miami, Vidal Brujan. One for one with a single so far. Line to left. Hap fires it in. They hold the runner at second, so another base hit could get us our first run in this one. You gotta get on your horse and get to that ball and get it back in because he's gonna come barreling around first and put some pressure on you. If you bobble it or you don't get there in a hurry, it's gonna make you look silly and end up on second base. One out, runner at second. Now it's the Marlins catcher, Nick Fortes. That one missing inside. One out. The go-ahead run is its second. And we're at the top of the fifth. Right through there for a strike. Righty delivers. Fights that one away, still one and two. Man at second. He fouls it off. We'll do it again. Now there's a pitch we haven't seen in a while. It's going to be tough on the hitters if he can mix that in whenever he wants. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. Also really good at bat. What I like about this guy, his bat stays in the zone for a long time. Gives him the ability to foul off tough pitches. And a ball and two strikes. Foul off the plate. They'll do it again. Good battle here. About to be the eighth pitch of the at bat. Fouls it off. Still one and two. And that one off the outside edge. Man, oh man, I don't know how you take that pitch. That's as close as it gets. Got him swinging. Drew Smiley on the pitch here. And they felt it was time to bring on a left-handed reliever from the pin with the lefty hitter coming up. I think it's a good move. I know I never liked when opposing teams did that to me. Luis Arise stands in. A strikeout and a walk. This guy makes great contact. One of the best in the game at putting bat on ball. He's got such quick hands, and he's gaining pitch recognition. That keeps him square to the plate. There's a good chance that his bat's... Whips it across. That's the third off. Stop Dansby Swanson. The pitch. Ball delivers outside. He 
pitch in the dirt, and that's ball two. And that's in for a strike. And that one is inside. I almost feel like he's frustrated a little bit. He wants to be challenged. Michael Bush waiting for a turn at the plate. And a breaking ball drops in for a strike. Three balls. Payoff pitch. Fights it off. You'll see another. That's foul off to the right side. Keeps the A.B. going. Kicks and fires. He walked in, and that'll keep the line moving. It wasn't easy, but he earned that walk after a long at bat. No outs, runner at first. Michael Bush, the next Cub to hit. 0 for 1 so far. Out to center. Squeezes it. Here's the second baseman, Nico Horner. He's over for one. And there's no doubt that they'll feed off the energy from this crowd, right? I mean, yeah, I'd say the intensity level has gone up a few notches for sure. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get in the scoring position. Foul off down the right side. Deal one. That's the ball. And there he goes. Pitch misses. Throw to second. Tag. Out at second. Well, the throw bounced in there perfectly. Really nice job on the back. Pick it, apply that tag, hold it on him. Just didn't get a good jump over there at first base. That's half the battle is stealing bases, maybe even more. Two outs. And a 2 1 hammered, but foul. Right-handed reliever. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. That's the third out, and we'll play extra innings in this one. Sixth inning coming up. Still nothing on the scoreboard. And we're back. Josh Bell at the plate now. The first baseman, number nine. Josh Bell. The pitch. Turned on, but that's foul down the third baseline.
Man at second. Misses the zone and he gets him to chase. Man, that was pretty gross right there. Pitch misses. Now one and two. Kicks and deals. And he grounds one to the right side. Bush takes it himself. Leadoff man retired in the sixth. Not a bad outcome in that spot. The runner moves up to third, and now they have a chance to drive in the go-ahead run. It's not a hit, but at the end of the day, it's a good at that, especially when you're playing extra innings. The move being made at third. Pitch running here. Abasayil Garcia. Here's the third baseman, Jake Berger. Well, it doesn't get much easier with this next batter, but I totally understand going with the intentional walk in that spot. He's just too dangerous at the plate right now, and there's a base open, so it gives you options defensively to get an out. You know, this is kind of a tough matchup as a left-handed hitter facing a left-handed pitcher. What you tell yourself is, I want to stay square to the plate, and try to hit the ball over the shortstop's head. Swing and a drive, deep right field. That's bad. And it bangs off the wall. One runs in. Around third. And he's got himself a triple. Well, he was a little off balance. He got the front foot down, but was so great at keeping the hands back and allowed him still to get good wood to this baseball. Big one there as he drives in a couple of runs. on now number 43 this southpaw has been really good against left-handed hitters and up next for Miami Brian De La Cruz one for two And first offering is fouled off. Oh. And that's downstairs and outside. Moving in the Cubs bullpen, Hector Neris. Up and throwing for manager Craig Council. And here it comes. Well, a good slider from an opposite-handed pitcher has to stay in that tunnel just a little bit longer. Otherwise, recognition can cause you to barrel it up. And right there, the hitter clearly couldn't do anything with it. And that one is lifted in the air. Bellinger pulls it down. Runner tags from third. He scores on the sack fly. It's three zip. There you go. Nice little RBI there. It's a great at bat. Mm -hmm. Got the job done. And now the right fielder, Jesus Sanchez. And the first pitch misses for ball one. It's a slider for a strike. One ball, one strike. The oh. next pitch misses, and it's two, two and one. one. Two gone, base is empty, but three runs across, and we're the top half of the sixth. And now the lefty still two and two after the foul ball. Oh. 
Swings over the splitter for strike three. Three runs for him here, and they move ahead. 8-9-1 scheduled in the bottom of the sixth. It's the Marlins three, and the Cubs nothing. Back now for the bottom of the sixth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, Tanner Scott. He comes in with a chance for his second save of the season. So coming into the game now on defense, Emmanuel Rivera. He'll play second. Mike Tockman getting ready to hit. Struck out swinging his first time. And the pitch. These fans, they are ready to cheer about something. You know, these Cubs, to put it bluntly, need to put together more competitive at-bats, and I don't think they've lived up to their own expectations at the plate. They really haven't worked many deep counts or long at-bats, and that's fine if you're having a lot of success, but at this point, I think it's time to make an adjustment. Scott, he's kind of a prototypical bullpen arm in today's game. Electric stuff, that results in a ton of strikeouts in a tough spot like this. That is a big-time benefit. As a hitter, when a guy like this comes into the game, you feel like he's standing on top of you, and it's just attack mode coming right at you, expecting to get a swing and miss. Chase the fastball up the ladder for strike three. Boog gets talked about a lot, but a good high fastball in a two-strike situation, it's just become such a problem for hitters in more recent years. But with all of the emphasis by pitchers on developing that spin rate, having a good grip on the baseball, those high fastballs, they kind of look like to the hitter that they're rising, even though they're not, but they're not decreasing in velocity and spin rate, so very difficult to get the barrel on it. Horner leads off second with one gone in the inning. There's the strike. And a pitch. In the dirt, and a count one and two. And that one hammered way back there. And it's into the bleachers, out of here. That's worth the price of admission. His second of the year, it's 3-2. Good hitter gets pitch recognition early. He saw exactly where that was going to be. The challenge, not get over anxious and come out of your swing. He stayed on it and got all of it. Ian Hatt, the next Cub to hit. That misses, and that's ball one. Just off the inside edge. Scott, maybe a little less aggressive on the mound right now after that home run, Chris. Yeah, it seems that way. You know, pitchers, they can come out, feel good, but then all of a sudden get touched up a little bit, and they start trying to throw instead of pitch. They're not trusting their stuff. Seiya Suzuki hitting on deck circle. And a four-pitch walk. His ability to draw walks has been something that's been part of his career since day one. Andrew Nardi taking over on the mound. He has a great slider with tons of movement. Pretty much the last thing you want from your bullpen arms are free passes, especially in spots like this. Make the team earn their way on. Now it's the DH, Seiya Suzuki. In the air, right side. Drops into the glove. Well, such a confidence boost for a reliever to come into the ball game and get the first hitter he faces. Just makes everything slow down a little bit, and then from there can really settle in. One out left for the Cubs. Here's Cody Bellinger. 
Typically, the outfield defense will play a little bit deeper just to keep the ball in front, make sure that runner on first doesn't come all the way around the score and tie this ball game up. And a pitch. Swing and a ball lifted in the air. Shallow left field. And that'll fall for a base hit. Throw stops the lead runner at second. Two on and two out. Hey, whatever works, right? Doesn't have to be impressive. He clearly didn't catch that one on the big part of the bat. Just kind of muscled it out there. And on you know, the mound, it can be pretty frustrating for a pitcher. But you just kind of have to expect those to drop in there sometimes. A chance now to even the score and maybe extend this game. So two down. Christopher Morel, the next cup to hit. Down to their final lap. But an opportunity to deliver the tying and maybe even a winning run. And he takes one right on the black. And it's 0-1. With the tying run at second, winning run at first. Here in the bottom of the sixth. Out towards right center field. And that'll fall for a base hit. Runner around third on his way to the plate. He pulls into second as a run scores on the play. Such great concentration. Everybody on their feet, knowing that you could come through with a good swing. Well, there he doesn't try to do too much. Next to hit. So it's second and third occupied. They go for the intentional walk. Base is now loaded. And there's a force at every base. So the Marlins go with a new arm. Ryan Weathers. Well, no margin for error in terms of throwing strikes with the bases loaded. Just has to execute one pitch at a time to try to get out of this. Two outs, bases full. And the batter now, Michael Bush. And he takes one right on the black. And that is strike one. Tough situation right here. It's so important as a pitcher to get ahead in the count as he did right there. Left hand hitter waits. Line drive, base hit. Across is the winning run, and the Cubs walk it off and win it 4-3. While well, you come to the ballpark hoping you'll see something special that day, whether you're a player or a fan, a walk-off win, nobody forgets that. A memorable moment that will be logged in the backs of the minds of everybody that witnessed this here today. 4-3, our final score. The Cubs go home a winner for Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show. I'm John Chomby. Thanks for joining us.